Hello and welcome to the 15th Mew Arma 3 Sync repository tutorial video. Today I'll be going over how to connect to and utilize Arma 3 Sync as not only a repository but a game launcher uh, for those who are interested in that. So to start off we need the program called Arma 3 Sync. It is a vastly supported tool used throughout the Arma community as a whole. Uh, we've adopted it for use in the main part of the 15th Mew. Uh, it's been received with overall positive. So you would start, you would download it, install it any way you would normally install things. I already have it installed so I'm not gonna run through that. If you do need help installing it, uh, just send me a PM on the forums and I'll be glad to help. So now that you have it installed, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my shortcut. And this is the this is how it will be when you launch it fresh. So I will need to set the Arma 3 Sync up. It does a really good job of automatically detecting where your Arma 3 is. As you can tell, I have numerous hard drives. So and it was able to detect that it was on not my normal Steam library. This is actually an SSD I only keep Arma on. So what you need to find is the arma3.exe and you'll want to find this even if you will want to set this part up even if you choose not to use this program to launch your game it still needs to know where your arma3 folders are so it can make sure and it will automatically detect things and make sure you're kept up to date so as you can see here it knows where it needs to search and install the add-ons it downloaded downloads. Uh, if I need to, I could always set up more. I wasn't joking when this is my Arma drive. So workshop, that that's all my Steam Workshop items that I like to play around with. So now it knows to also search the workshop items I download. I can go into the launcher options if I want to choose to use this as a launcher. I can set up my profile. I only have one one armor profile so default or my name is the same but I, I leave that unchecked uh, show script errors that's only good for people who are wanting to help actively uh, debug and provide input to script makers and add-on makers uh, to let them know that there's issues with the script they've written or anything like that uh, no pause that's a typical single-player thing we most of the stuff here we don't need to to bother with. Uh, some of it's for if people use Arma 3 Sync to launch their servers, so if they need to check signatures, file patching for such, they can. Uh, performance stuff, so I can set the max RAM, set max CPUs the game will use, uh, no splash world, default, no logs, pretty standard stuff. So that's the first three tabs here. So going into now the guts of the program, the reason I, I enjoy this so much, is the repositories. Unfortunately, we already use, we host multiple repos off of our server box, so we won't be able to use an auto config this time. If you had an auto config, it would import all the data here that's needed for the server uh, just by putting in the, the auto config link here and then hitting import. It would name it, everything. Uh, since we're doing it technically manually, I could name it however I want, but for standardization, because I typically utilize three to four repos at any given time uh, to various things I do throughout the community, I like to name them very specifically. So 15th Mew, SOC, Recruiting Server, Repo. Like I said, again, you can name that whatever you want. It does not matter. So now, on protocol, we utilize FTP. There is HTTP and HTTPS, which is a different way of getting the files to you. I currently only utilize FTP repos because setting up a, a web-based repo is a lot harder and more complicated. And In my opinion, all the extra work doesn't 
correlate to, to anything better than FTP. So we're going to come down here now to our host or URL area. We're going to keep the FTP dot slash slash. We're just going to put in the IP for the repo, which is 66.85.14.170. We'll leave the port as T1. Should automatically, uh, 21's the default port for Arma 3 Sync. So it should keep that the same. Our login is RS. You're going to leave the password area blank and you're going to leave anonymous unchecked. So again, put in the FTP, port, login, leave the password area blank, and leave anonymous unchecked. I'm going to now hit OK, and it's going to connect to the repo. Now there's two ways you can actually utilize the repo. You can click on it here, and then hit this one, connect to repository. This is if you want to download every single thing on the repo all at once. I don't like that method, so I don't do it. Another important feature is if I hit notify, every time I launch Arma 3 Sync, it will notify me if the repo has been updated. So there's some that I don't need to be alerted if they update because I don't use them that often. So on my other profile, I can I leave those unchecked, and then if I ever want to check, I can go in there, and it'll also say it over here. It'll say status updated or OK or anything like that. Well, I'll show you in a little bit. But if I have the notify checked when I launch Arma 3 Sync, it will pop up with a pop-up window saying this repo has updated. So now to actually connect to the repo and download the mods, I come down to events down here. So 15th Mew Recruiting Server for use on the 15th Mew Public Recruiting Server. And I'm going to hit this button with the blue arrow and the white tab and now it's going to scan the default area so the areas it will scan and I, I can tell it where to install to we set up as soon as it's done I'll, sh I'll show you how you can change that if you want this usually depending on how many how many add-ons you have it can take upwards of five to ten minutes uh, at one point in time, I had 200 and some odd gigs of, of mods I was bouncing between, and this uh, this took forever doing that. I've now since cleaned up my Arma, Arma drive, and I'm down to about 70 to 80 gigs. So it takes quite a quite a bit faster nowadays. Just wait till this is finished and then. Any minute now. And waiting and waiting. Okay, so uh, you'll notice here I have two folders that I could install the, the mods to. I could have an infinite amount. Oops, didn't mean to go to that one. Add on options. I could add any director, an infinite amount of directories I wanted here. So if you don't want to trust Arma 3 Sync to download to your Arma drive, you can always change that. Like let's see, I'm gonna I'm not actually gonna install anything here. But I could go in here, set it up, and there. I could install add-ons there. Now I'm going to delete that before I accidentally download anything into that directory because I don't want that. So now that we're here, we're presented with a couple options. So if it's red like this, that means I don't have any of it. I have nothing like that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and check that one. And that's going to download everything that I need for that mod. And it'll say the total file size. And I can hit play. And I currently have my arm launched in the background uh, doing some other tasks so I can't actually run through it. But I could check that one as well. I could do a select all, expand all of them, etc, etc. 
So now that we've we know what the red is, you'll see these ones that are they're black and they have something's something's updated and not the same as what's on my drive. So we'll see that in the clapgan, my my clapgan is different than what is on the repository and what so most likely if I were to compare my clapgan is outdated it is uh, compared to the repo and only these files are the ones that are are different so it's only updating what's needed if the files match one for one it leaves them black and says they're okay same for task force radio uh, task force radio is one of them it does have a nice installer program do not use this I say again do not use the TFAR installer it's gonna every time you uh, update TFR on the the repo it says would you like to run the TFAR installation hit, hit the big fat no don't let it run uh, unfortunately TFAR is updated to the new TeamSpeak versioning and this installer no longer works because of the way TeamSpeak runs their plugins now. So now that we've, you know, I've theoretically downloaded everything, I can now, the fun thing, favorite servers. This is this server is connected to this repository. And it will only let me Sorry, it will let you, it puts in the passwords, everything, so you can connect to the server. If I were to hit here, hit my start game button down here, this would connect me straight into the recruiting server. Another thing you can do is come over to add-ons, and I could select which group of add-ons I wanted to connect with. I could also check the mod sets. So here's the events. Like I said, use the events. Don't use the actual, don't use the base repositories. Always use the events. Uh, they're set up more specific for not needing to launch with a mass group of things. I could also make my own. Whoops. I'm not selected. I could make my own add on group. So let's see. And they're done that. I could then drag over the mods I want. I obviously, even, if I do this and then I hit this, it's still going to launch with the mods that are here. So I would need to empty that out, and that's just going to put me into the main menu. I could then select those, hit launch. That's just a, a small feature, uh, definitely not one that people need to use. So now that I was talking about the updates notification system, we've connected to the repo. So now it says status OK. It That's letting me know that I have seen and know that the repo, I've gone into it. I know everything's good. I might need to update some things. But overall, from the last time I opened this repo, nothing has changed. So. That is the end of this tutorial, so I'm going to, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them on the forums. Uh, we have numerous personnel floating around that are more than happy to help and give a lending hand as needed. Thank you and have a wonderful day.